stepping up. We did for them this morning, which has been organized in association with Microsoft. A lot has been changed over the last few years in the way consumers used to shop. The retail landscape of the country is changing with every passing day. With the advent of e-commerce players, the competition has also increased for the bread and water retailers <coughs> to provide discounts and a great deal of challenge for bread and water retailers. But brick and mortar retailers are also reinventing themselves by the means of omni-channel retailing and other innovative methods. So they do not lose ground and relevance in the long run. Today our panelists comprises of brick and mortar retailers uh, at ED Retail Seminar and they will talk and discuss their strategy you know, to stay competitive and to counter the rapid growth of e-commerce in the country and the highly competitive retail landscape. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to the organizers and in particular our honorable speakers. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Abhishek Gangli, who is the Managing Director of Puma India, to give the keynote address. Please uh, give a big round of applause for Mr. Gangli. And But I'll try to make some sense of what I speak. Uh, I don't I don't typically do a keynote address wherever I speak, so I would like, uh, because it's a small group, uh, if at any point of time there is any question, I'd be happy to make it more interactive. And if anyone wants to add to what I'm saying or differ with what I'm saying, that would be very welcome. So that's the ground rules of from my side in this entire period that we chat about. Um, I will also try to keep this very relevant to the context and also give you some examples of things from uh, what my experience has been or my experience is. Uh, some of the things that I, being in retail and being doing brand management in the space of retail, uh, feel that we should be doing going forward. Um, I will, to just put the context in, in uh, because I work for Puma, I would like to give you a bit of context of the organization so that you can know that from where I am coming from. Um, Puma came into, Puma is of course a global sports brand, uh, globally the number three brand, uh, uh, globally the number th three brand. We came into India as the last entrant um, in the space of sports. Uh, so we came in after the Reeboks and the Nikes and Adidas that already set up its base in India. We came in in 2006. And that was a time when uh, it was a very different retail landscape. In fact, at that point of time, it was a, you know, the malls were just coming up. There was a transition from high street to, uh, to, uh, to shopping center malls. Um, and, and it was a very, very different landscape. And it's just is about 10 years time. But in this period of uh, 10 years or nine years, we rose from being a brand which was non-existent in the country to being arguably the number one sports brand in the country and probably the number one brand, global brand in the space of not just sports, but any brand you consider, any apparel brand, uh, whether it's a Levi's or a Benetton or or a Zara, larger uh, than any of these brands. So we have had a successful journey. Uh, also, uh, and it, which is very relevant to the context because at this stage, one of the most topical things is online and discounting and losing money. We have always uh, believed in profitability. We turned even positive in the third year of our, of our operations and we have always stayed profitable. So our approach as a brand and even when we do retail, uh, whatever be the format has been to make money because at the end of the day that is the sustenance that is the sustainability of your presence in a country as fluid as India um, and you must be reading in a lot of cases there are brands which have come and gone because the premise was at that point of time India is a long drawn story India is a 15 year story India is a 20 year story and hence uh, it makes sense to not look at profitability but what it happens is uh, everyone loses steam after losing money for five, six years. And I can give you numerous examples of that. So the guiding principle 
of doing business in India for whichever channel, whichever brand, is that how can you quickly get into a space of cash flows and into a space of profitability. So that has been our guiding principle as, as a company. So whatever, the retail scenario has changed. And I'm sure you know people in the media write about it, people in retail experience it, but it is a completely different world. If you look at Indian retail 10 to 15 years back, it was primarily on high streets. There were some mom and pop stores, some footwear retailers, some apparel retailers, and then department stores came in. Slowly brands realized that this is not good as a distribution network to have. And then they realized that the only way to grow in India for a brand was to take the exclusive store route. It is very, very contrary to the developed market where multi-brand retailing is very, very evolved. Whether you talk about sports retail, whether you talk about a departmental store, you talk about fast fashion, brands uh, uh, outside get sold primarily through multi-brand stores. But we all uh, in India realized in the last decade that the only way we can grow here and distribute our products in the country in the number of cities was to open exclusive stores either directly or through a franchise network. I'll give you a context. Today in India, just before online happened, most of the brands were about 70 to 77, anywhere between 60 to 80 percent through mono brand exclusive stores. And that was also true for Puma. Globally, our business from exclusive stores is only about 9% because the, the multi-brand space is very, very evolved. And that's a different approach that one had to take. But what happened in the process that when brands set up exclusive stores and you must have heard brands came in and said that, you know, by 2000, and, I, and I've read these newspaper reports in the past that by 2015, and this is in 2010, by 2015, we will have 1,500 stores in India. And some brands claim we will have 1,000 stores in India. And there was, a, there, was this, there was this rush to open up exclusive stores and open up the number of exclusive stores, number of cities became a very, very important KPI for a lot of a performance indicator for a lot of companies and brands. In the process, what happened was retail, Monobrand retail for a brand, uh, which is the brick and mortar retail, is a double-edged sword. The benefit of having a brand, and I'm here talking about an exclusive, uh, I'm talking of a single brand, is that it gives the opportunity. First and foremost, you have to open exclusive stores way back in four, five, eight, ten years back, because there was no other opportunity, because the multi-brand scene was very, very limited. So you have to open exclusive stores. The benefit was it gave brands the opportunity to showcase the brand in its full measure. And brands could actually come out in its true colors in an exclusive store because you kind of control how it looks like and it's an exclusive brand environment. The flip side, the flip side of running exclusive store is the real estate and the profitability and the return on investment of that space is dependent on one brand. And hence, if that brand has one bad season or somehow it's across, if consumers start losing interest in that brand and the brand slowly starts flattening out for some reason, and it happens, it happens in brand life cycle in any consumer market, then slowly and steadily you build white elephants for yourself. And that's what has exactly happened over the years for a lot of brands. Because brands, for various reasons, have lost steam. Uh, and, and, uh, and retail becomes very, very difficult a machine to then defend. So that's why I call brick and mortar retail uh, a kind of a double-edged sword. A big opportunity and at, at some point of time the only opportunity. And on the other side, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big risk. Now, today, it is even more contextual with the onset of the challenge, and I think that's the reason we are all here to, to, uh, to when, when, when people say challenging environment, I know where people are only talking about online. And 
it comes online it comes online with a price proposition which is which is better than what the retailers on the offline space can afford and immediately because you have to depend 300 stores 200 stores 100 stores 400 stores 700 stores all the, that's why i think everyone is in a, in a kind of a tizzy right now because you suddenly have real estate to defend and everyone over the last before that they were all talking about by this by this year we will open this many stores we will go to this many cities so that's why the hit of online became far more than i think it came in in a developed market um, uh, because it was on the premise of multi brand a multi brand can is in a better position to survive onslaught on price on on a new channel like e-commerce much more because a multi brand can tomorrow pick the best uh, out of every brand pick and choose can get in brands that doesn't exist can create private labels a multi a multi brand environment has much much better ammunition to fight um, uh, to fight um, a price proposition on the online side uh, then uh, and, and that's an example I can I can show I can tell you and uh, people from lifestyle are not here probably but lifestyle has steadily grown uh, over the last couple of years despite and this is only one example we have because of the paucity of multi-brand retail that you have in the country so I think that single brand retailers face bigger challenge because it is about one brand and you know um, that brand available online becomes a big challenge so that's why I think it is very very topical so so what can brick and mortar retailers do to survive this and I think some of the questions are um, very futuristic um, omni channel <laughs> I, I'll touch upon it uh, at the end um, omni channel is a very misused word I read every day in, in newspapers again thanks to economic times and others uh, that a lot of brands are doing omni channel uh, probably people don't know um, we are just scratching the surface on this and how difficult it is uh, to, to arrive at omni channel and I'll, I'll come to omni channel because that's probably the meat of the entire discussion I think for a brick and mortar retailer one is of course omni channel integrating with digital and we will all talk about it I guess there is a panel discussion uh, which is also um, slated after this but I think a brick and mortar retailer has to create a proposition which is which is based on experience and uh, irrespective and I'm sure there are people here who have had uh, experience in running experience in being part of digital commerce e-commerce Ganesh for example has been but I can assure you from my experience that irrespective of what e-commerce players talk about and we are very close to all of them you cannot provide the experience that a physical store can for a consumer it is just not possible you can use technology you can use all kinds of tools but it is just not possible so if someone has to buy today a footwear which is of 15,000 rupees or a denim which is for 10,000 rupees I strongly don't think that e-commerce is the right format to, to sell that product irrespective of the digital experience that they can create so I think experience of, of, a, of, of, of a brand and experience of products uh, which require real touch and feel and I have seen it so you know I have some claim to fame on this because I should I don't want to be branded as thinking uh, you know uh, back in time I don't sound, want to uh, in, uh, I don't intend to sound dated on this but experience is critical and it has been seen in developed markets today in whether it is United States of America or it is in London or it is in Barcelona there e-commerce has come much earlier than it came into India yes of course in India there is a claim that you know e-commerce is more relevant because of infrastructure and all of that but
brands have stayed relevant in the brick and mortar space primarily riding on experience and customer service and on a differentiated product so i think experience which is the sheer real estate experience which is the retail environment experience uh, because shopping and it's not just in india shopping is 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 in itself a pastime it's a, it, a lot of people have it's a hobby uh, women love to shop off uh, you know uh, while going to uh, the stores uh, it it is it is an experience in itself so retail environment overall experience customer service i know for sure from my background there are store staff that we have in our stores who know each and every staff each and every customer they attend to they have you know irrespective of how many tools they you give them they have this kind of a small notebook of their own customers and i said their own ye mera customer hai you know this is this is this is the inside ye this customer belongs to me and they have their phone numbers and they have they get called for weddings to 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 parties of, of these customers so the kind of relationship that a store staff sometimes builds um with with these people uh, with the consumer is lot of times <coughs> underrated and they exist and i have spoken through various dipsticks i have spoken to various consumers across markets across cities in india who would like to shop not only from a particular brand but also from a particular store and with a particular guy so the loyalty is not just related to one brand and it is also related to the store and related to the staff he, he speaks to so a lot is about customer service and tax one battle that i think brick and mortar retail can fight because if e-commerce is their challenge then there is no way on earth e-commerce can can give that experience it there is no way on earth um i hear that you know today a lot of e-commerce players are trying to have their delivery boys have that kind of experience um and that kind of relationship but the sheer number and the sheer number of places that a delivery boy goes to is far more uh, than the number of customers loyal customers that a that a uh, that a one uh, one store um, staff can attend to so this guy will definitely have an advantage over over the delivery boys and and these guys are supposed to be brand people they are they trained to be brand people uh, whereas the others are trained to be efficient operators so i think the human touch this cannot go especially in india this cannot go so i think overall that is one of the